Hello YouTube, it's time again for another weekly edition of On The Stack, the show where I, Wyatt, otherwise known as Herb, go over the top few headlines from the world of Magic the Gathering every week. Definitely make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see this news. I'm trying to narrow it down a little bit, trying to be a little bit more picky with my choices. Maybe talk about three, two or three pieces of news uh, this week. Obviously, we had a big weekend in Magic the Gathering. It was the Magic World Championship. I, for those that don't know me, am very big into competitive video games, competitive gaming in general. I'm competitive. I like esports. I like sports. I like winning. I like strategy. Um, so this weekend was an absolute delight for me. The Magic World Championship, it's the first real one since I've be become uh, re-inundated with Magic as a hobby, a pastime, a an entertainment piece, and partly um, my job as someone who makes Magic the Gathering content. Last year was great. Yuta Takahashi won. It was still being played at home this year. It was the Magic 30th Anniversary Edition or 30th Anniversary Party in Vegas and having the championship be played in person was amazing. Unfortunately, they played on Arena, which was a bit of a bummer. Um, but having competitors face-to-face uh, -face over monitors because, again, they played digitally for some reason uh, was really exciting. And I think that it, it was... Um, an enjoyable weekend. I, I was not there personally, but I spent the majority of my weekend at home watching coverage of the event. Huge shout out to the coverage team, all of the um, panelists, all of the commentators. Everyone did fantastic. And for the most part, the broadcast went off fairly nicely. So we want to take a quick look at our first news story. First up on the stack is the Magic championship uh 28 breakdown this is every um every competitor no matter how they qualified had to register their decks um so the first on friday we got draft and standard saturday was explorer and then sunday the top four was back to standard uh so the explorer meta game which is basically like um modern but on arena so it's not the entire card pool it's it's everything that's ever been put on arena is your card pool for explorer and we saw a pretty nice um spread of decks that were registered for the event uh, the top deck was the abzan grease fang with kamigawa coming out grease fang and uh parhelion 2 kind of partner up to create this really devastating combo and the rest of the deck has tons of cool vehicles that Grease Fang can revive. And it's kind of a graveyard engine because you want to get Par Parhelion into your graveyard. You don't ever want to cast it from your hand because it's expensive. Um, next on the list was the Racto Sacrifice. The Cat Oven combo is still relevant. Uh, surprisingly, Mono Blue Spirits was the third most registered uh, deck and it performed really really well. I think it's a very cool list. I've already imported it into arena to play uh, Shout out to Jim Davis MTG huge streamer that I follow Absolute blessing to have his content and learn from their drafting. I will link below the uh, YouTube pages for Jim themselves and also their channel uh, bronze to mythic where they draft um every set all the way from bronze ranking to mythic in as min as li as few drafts as they possibly can um and it's always fun to be along for that ride the fourth deck was teamer transmogrify this was a julian wellman special and four people um registered that deck and then we've got a bunch of one-offs azorius control incarnation we got selesnia angels racto sacri or mid-range mono red fires that kind of thing it's pretty cool a uh, nice little um, spread of the metagame for 
Explorer, and then we get to Standard, where we're only working from Midnight Hunt forward in the current Standard, and 22 out of the 32 players played the same deck. Ish. Esper Midrange is the most powerful deck in Standard, quote-unquote, um, and 68.8% of the 32 players that qualified for Worlds agreed. There was a lot of little tweaks on this deck list. There was um, inclusions of Planeswalkers, inclusions of removal. Um, there wasn't really that many copies of the deck that were the same absolute word for word, piece for piece, but the goal was the same in all of them. Uh, play Rafine, get wedding announcements. Um, it was It's pretty good. Uh, the second... There's only two other decks that had more than one person playing them. The second is the Jun mid midrange, which kind of relies on Unleash the Inferno. Uh, obviously the most broken card in standard right now, which is Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And then there's Jun Reanimator, which is a Graveyard Soul of Windgrace combo, which helps get Titan of Industry onto the battlefield from the graveyard. Unfortunately, um, neither of those two decks made it to the top four and we'll go over that in a second but it's interesting to see the breakdown of the meta game from the world championship it was a really entertaining tournament the esper midrange is probably one of the most entertaining uh mirror matches that i've ever watched in competitive magic so it was it was not boring to watch a bunch of the same essential decks go up against one another and they're piloted by the best magic players in the world so Obviously, there's going to be high-impact plays. Um, yeah, and then that was the meta game breakdown. And for those that didn't watch, um, I'm about to spoil who won. So if you want to watch, uh, I will put a chapter header on this video to let you jump forward now to the next chapter so that you don't get spoiled on who won. In the top four, we had three Esper mid-range decks and one Grixis mid-range deck. The two most exciting players all weekend. Um, both had one of decks. Nobody else was playing them. They were electric. They were very exciting. Uh, and the top four whittled all the way down to uh, Nathan Stoyer, who beat Ely Cassis. Uh, to win the 28th Magic World Championship. It was very exciting finals. Uh, Ely Cassis was the only Esper mid-range deck. Uh, he, Ely played the standard um, meta, which was the Esper mid-range. And Ely was the only player that Nathan was unable to beat until he needed to, and then was able to squeak out a win he dropped a match to Ely in the finals, but this is the little top four bracket. So Ely uh, beat Nathan the first round in the uppers. Uh, Jacob, or sorry, Jakob Toth on the Esper midrange beat Carl Sarup on the Esper midrange. Then Nathan had to beat Carl, and then Nathan had to beat Jakob because Ely beat him. And then Nathan managed to pull out a, another victory in the title match and... Yeah, it was very exciting. I think Grixis, obviously, um, Fable of the Mirror Breaker is the biggest piece of the Grixis deck, but Nathan did make mention that Invoke Despair was also... It, it actually probably played a bigger impact, Invoke Despair, throughout the course of this uh, final bracket, throughout the course of the whole tournament. Uh, Nathan made mention in an interview that they skewed their mana um, a little bit more to the swamp so that they had an easier time casting invoke despair um yeah amazing amazing championship it makes it made me very happy to watch um the competition all weekend it made me very excited as a magic player as someone who loves competitive magic and that was the biggest story out of the weekend um and yeah there's a really awesome metagame breakdown or sorry deck list breakdown of everything that was played on the weekend uh from the standard deck list to the uh, the explorer deck list the full 
deck breakdowns are on the Magic Play website, magic.gg. The second story today and next up on the stack is new play promos await with the Brothers War. Uh, one thing that Magic keeps talking about is inviting more people to play in store, inviting people to take part in tournaments, inviting people to take part in competitive Magic again. And the uh, local game stores are getting five, one color, one per color, five play promos. If you come on by, um, in i guess the stores get to choose what event to hand these out in how you earn them um but here are the five play promos you've got lay down arms which is basically swords to plowshares exile target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of planes you control its controller gains three life uh flow of knowledge which is four and a blue for an instant draw a card for each island you control then discard two Corrupt, which is five and a black for a sorcery. Corrupt deals damage to any target equal to the number of swamps you control. You gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. You've got uh, Sardian Cliff Stomper, one and a red for a 04 Minotaur Barbarian. As long as it's your turn and you control four or more mountains, Sar Sardian Cliff Stomper gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of mountains you control. So it's a defender that can only attack on your turn. And then you've got Blanchwood Armor, which is two and a green for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each forest you control. Obviously, it, the lands matter. Um, uh, bu -bu -bu, these cards care about the count of basic land types you have in play, so they play nice with Molten Tributary and Friends in Dominar United, which all have uh, very specific text on them that says this is an island and a mountain. Um, with the new Brothers War promo packs available at local game stores through events such as Friday Night Magic and more, cooler versions of these cards await you. And then they've got these... Um, nice little side, not side, um, secondary art styles or border styles for these five new play promos. So that's really awesome. Uh, the last story, just trying to wrap up the weekend really quickly here. Uh, Brian Kibler, famous uh, ex Magic uh, competitive player, Magic. The Gathering Hall of Famer uh, was in a commercial for the Magic 30th booster packs, which are a product that a lot of people have opinions about, myself included. Uh, I will link to the video uh, of my opinion on the 30th anniversary right now. Uh, Brian Kibler and their partner uh, were in a television ad. Well, it played on Twitch, but a, a TVC that uh, promoted the Magic 30th anniversary bundle with the four booster packs of proxies for $1,000. And they immediately started receiving a lot of vitriol. Brian is a guy that a lot of people like. They, he's a player that a lot of people try to mimic in person. Brian, um, I've said three words to them in the past, and they seem like a very nice uh, human being. They're, they are held in high regard in the magic circles. They're held in a high regard uh, personally and competitively. And a lot of people who are outside of their circle also look up to him as a Hall of Famer. And they posted this uh, this morning, or last night, actually. Uh, lots of people with opinions about the 30th anniversary edition and my involvement in the announcement video that went up this weekend. This is buried in a Reddit thread, and I felt like I might want to repost it here. So they responded on Reddit to all of the hate and the comments and the bashing that they got on social media. Their Reddit post reads, I am absolutely not ashamed of promoting this. And frankly, I think it's super weird that people think I should be. At worst, this product is irrelevant to people. It's something that does not impact their lives in any way other than apparently making them angry because the internet says they should be. It's just a collector's product. It's not gameplay legal. Maybe it's not a good product. And if it isn't, it will fail and that's fine. 
but it's hardly nefarious to create something targeted at high-end collectors. Tons of companies do it. Now, I don't... I agree there. I think that tons of companies do target whales, for lack of a better word. People who spend a lot of money on their product. Unfortunately, the waters get a little bit muddied because at no point um, has Wizards of the Coast advertised this as a whale product. They've barely even advertised it as a collector's product. They've advertised it as a gift to the players, all players, as if like, you should be thanking us for this. We wanted to do something special for you, but their special thing uh, removes 99.9% .9 of their player base from potential consumers. So I agree that it's not nefarious to make something high end. And I think that all companies do things like this and they will continue to, and they should. Companies should try to make money. They should just do it without, um, you know, they should do it legally and morally. And so Brian continues here says, there are actively bad products that Wizard has made that directly impact the game experience of players and you can't opt out of. And I'm vocally critical of those. Things like Modern Horizon sets completely upending the format by shoehorning ultra-powerful cards into direct-to-modern releases, or Alchemy on Arena just being an absolute dumpster fire both in terms of philosophy and execution. People have an absolutely unhinged level of vitriol towards 30th edition. Yes, I got pay paid to promote it in this video. No, I'm not obligated to promote it otherwise. There's no shadiness of non-disclosure or conflict of interest or anything. I gave my honest opinion about things, about these things on social media and think the 30th edition is a totally fine product whose announcement was bungled because they included it with all of the other cool 30th anniversary stuff that is much more targeted towards and accessible to a wider audience. I'd much rather Watsi make things like this to get more money directly from big spenders than make stuff like Modern Horizons that the average player feels compelled to buy in order to keep up with actual gameplay that distorts formats and actual legal game pieces. So I, I get all of those arguments. And I think Brian Kibler should not receive any vitriol for agreeing to be in a commercial. There, at no point in this commercial did he say, I am Brian Kibler and I want you to buy this product. He was just paid to be a face. You can't get upset at the person who's in the Swiffer commercial. They don't necessarily care about Swiffer. They're just paid money to sit and read a script. And I don't think that anyone should attack anyone for something they were paid to read. I'm, okay, there there are obvious edge cases where people are paid to read horrendous things, but in this case, they took a job to make a piece of content for Wizards. They got paid to read what Wizards tells them to read, and then they get shit on, for lack of a better term, by the internet, um, their so-called peers and other people in the magic community. And I think that that's just argue about the product in the comments, argue about the uh, validity of their business choices. But none of those things are relevant to Brian Kibler being in a commercial. We all want to get paid. We all want to make money. They just happen to be one of the more famous magic players on earth. So them appearing in a commercial advertising magic products makes a lot of sense. And I don't think that people are pointing their vitriol um, in the right direction. They should be looking inwards, understanding that this product is either something they hate or something they desire or something that they can afford or whatever, but they need to leave it alone. Um, especially the people that are involved in paid advertising opportunities. There's an interesting conversation in the comments here. Pleasant Kenobi, another great magic YouTuber, um, 
kind of agrees, don't think you should be attacked for being in the ad, but at the same time, telling people their frustrations aren't real and being incredibly reductive about a product that obviously upsets people is not doing you any favors. And I think this is uh, Pleasant Kenobi just being a bit of an antagonist. I think that there's... They're not necessarily trying to say something super constructive. This doesn't do you any favors is not a constructive thing to say. And I understand that um, they can be a little spicy, Pleasant Kenobi. So obviously wanting to stir something up a little bit is, is in their wheelhouse. And I'm sure that they have possibly a passive... Uh, relationship with Brian in communication in their friend circles um, what I don't appreciate is that Brian follows up saying I think many of the frustrations voiced about this pretty much aren't real and then I have to just go back to what Pleasant Kenobi said where he says that you know being reductive about these things is not doing him any favors I think I applaud Brian for standing up for himself. I don't think anyone should take uh, heat or lashings because they were an actor in a television commercial. Um, I mean, obviously, it's a little bit fuzzier than that. He was acting as himself. It was a product that he, one, can afford and two, might love to have because he plays magic. Um I, I agree with this. I agree with the defense. I think that that's a fine thing to do. Um, nobody should be reaching out to him personally and saying, hey, this is su this is suspect that you're in this commercial. I thought you were better than this. Um, he got a paycheck. He paid was paid to advertise something that doesn't actually do any harm to anybody. And then the comments get a little bit more tricky obviously head on over to brian's twitter if you want to see more but that is a big big story that has been going in circles because even i when i saw the trailer for the first time was like oh i didn't think that brian and um their partner w would stoop to something like that but obviously as i think about it more I take a step back, which people with vitriol on the internet don't tend to do. Um, you take a step back, you let it stew a little bit, you think it through, and it's like, I've, even if I was a nobody, I would have accepted that job. If I was a somebody, I would have accepted that job. I would love to get paid to sit there and talk about magic. I want to be paid to sit here and talk about magic. Why wouldn't I get paid to sit there and talk about magic? It just doesn't make any sense to be mad at Brian for it. Anyway, now that we've resolved the news, I have one tiny little special treat. And that is we got the full teaser trailer for Brothers War at Worlds. And I want to watch it with you right here, right now because I think it's going to be amazing. Two days ago. Pause my music. So we played the teaser uh, last week. This week, uh, we're going to take a look at it. The full thing was revealed. Let's watch. It's a fairy. Oh, Johnny. I've spent my entire life learning about time. Uh oh, I am glad to. Surrender 
so awkwardly. I'm good at it. Were you followed? There are sleeper agents everywhere. Yes, Teferi. We are everywhere. And you will surrender to our perfection. to protect the innocent. The gate watch. <laughs> Don't waste your <laughs> breath. <laughs> Let me take the stone. I can fix this. Nobody has to die. Running, dodging, hiding. It's what you do best. But where has that gotten you? I tried to save my people. I, I tried to save Dominaria. The Phyrexians did not destroy your home, Teferi! You did! Oh, shit. All oh, this Jaya. time, you still can't face the truth! You are a coward! Enough! This ends now! Uh-oh. He's going Super Saiyan. How many lives do cats have? Time always catches up with me. Oh, gotta get in the time machine. Now it's time to face it. Reinvent the past, retake the future. So uh, the notable dates for Brothers War are uh, next Friday, the not this Friday, the following Friday, the 11th is pre-release. The following Tuesday is Arena and Magic Online. And then Friday, the 15th, 18th is the full paper release. And I'm very excited about the Brothers War. There was a bunch of cards revealed over the weekend at Magic Worlds, um, Magic 30. Uh, but we are going to save that stuff for another video. So again, thank you so much for joining me this week on The Stack, the show where we go over the few, not the few, uh, uh, the show where we go over a few of Magic's biggest headlines from the week that was... I appreciate you for being here. I appreciate you for subbing to the channel, hitting that like button, post a comment. Let me know what you think about the Brian Kibler situation. Let me know if you watched the Magic World Championship. Do you think that uh, Ely Cassis could have pulled it off? Let me know. I appreciate it all. I appreciate this community. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. And I will catch you on the next one. May all of your hands be keeps and all of your opponents draw mulligans. Bye.